Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me on this demo. I'd start by introducing myself. So I'm John Ariojo, founder and chief data scientist at Data Centric Solutions. So the reason for this demo today is to demo an analytics bot, something we've developed at Data Centric Solutions. So what's the reason for the analytics bot? Well, if you've ever worked in commercial analytics, you will understand that commercial analytics teams are inundated with ad hoc requests for data analysis, which often leaves them firefighting and not able to be proactive in their work. So how does the analytics bot solve this problem? Well, the analytics bot actually allows you to query your data in natural language, and it will return a response based on that data. So I foresee this being used by product managers or chief executives or anybody that requires insights from data. Now you no longer need the SQL expertise. You can simply query the data with natural language and you'll get the response back that you would if you went directly to an analyst. So for this particular demo, we will be looking at a data set that records the CO2 emissions from vehicles. I will just give you a brief overview of the data by showing you some information about what the contents of the data are. So we can do that by pressing the show data button, which reveals a tab and the data info is presented within that tab. So as you can see, we have lots of information about vehicles, including brand, vehicle, vehicle type, all the way down to the CO2 emissions emitted for each vehicle. So we will be testing the bot on this data with three levels of question difficulty. And I will, the first level of question difficulty is the beginner level. Now the beginner level question does not require too much abstract reasoning or it doesn't require any domain knowledge. If you pay attention to the screen now, you'll see a chart mapping out the thought process for the beginner level question. So here we have something, a question that might be posed by one of our business or commercial stakeholders, which vehicle has the highest CO2 emissions on average? So when you step through the thought process as an analyst, what you would be doing is, first of all, you would want to understand what it means to have the highest CO2 emissions on average. This is pretty simple. It's simply just the highest rank of the average CO2 at the vehicle level. Any beginner or entry level analyst would understand this as a proposition. The key thing to note here is that there's no requirement for domain knowledge. All of the, all of the knowledge required to answer this question exists within the data set already. There is already a column called CO2 emissions. Lastly, the analyst would deliver something like what we can see here in the query box, which is simply just a pandas query that would act on the structured data set and return your response here, which is the Bugatti Chiron. So that just maps out the beginner level query. So let's test this out on the analytics bot to see how it performs on this type of query. So I'm submitting this query to the bot by just hitting submit here. And as you can see, we've got a response back from the analytics bot. The response is the vehicle with the highest CO2 emissions on average is the Bugatti Chiron with an average of 522 grams per kilometer. And I can assure you that this is the correct answer as I've already run these queries behind the scenes. Next, let's take a look at an intermediate level query. Now, the thought process between the between the beginner level query and the intermediate level query isn't actually that different. The main difference here is that the intermediate level query requires an additional data processing step. So let's have a look at what this means. So the ad hoc query might come in the form of something like this, which vehicle has the highest ratio of emissions to engine size? Now the ratio of emissions to engine size does not already exist in the data, which means the analyst would have to construct that variable and then perform the univariate statistics on top of that. 
So really the only difference between the thought process here is just that additional step or the, the, the additional computational step that the analyst would have to write in their pandas code. Saying that, let's just have a look at how the analytics bot handles this type of request. So I'm entering the request into the submission window, hitting enter and then pressing submit and waiting for the response. So the response here is the vehicle with the highest ratio of emissions to engine size is the Ford EcoSport with a ratio of 197 grams per kilometer per mole per liter. So let's have a look at a higher level query. And as you can see from the diagram, the higher level query actually has a much more complex thought process around it and a much more complex analytical thought process around it than the beginner and the intermediate level queries. A higher level query might sound something like this. Which vehicle is the worst for the environment? Now, to answer that as an analyst, what would you be thinking? The first thing you think is, what does it mean for a vehicle to be bad for the environment? What does that actually mean? So you'd have to have some domain knowledge there to get the answer to that, which is the vehicle emits greenhouse gases, something along those lines. I know that's a bit simplistic, but just for the purposes of the demonstration, we'll take it as that. The next step is which column in the data set records gas emissions, so greenhouse gas emissions. We haven't told the bot which column to look for. So, you know, and as an analyst, you wouldn't necessarily know you'd have to think and understand with your domain knowledge, which column is the best column to look for, for this, to answer this query. So looking at our data set, we know it's the CO2 emissions. Next, we look at what does it mean to be the worst for the environment? So being the worst, there's another form of abstract reasoning there in that we know that it's the vehicle that emits the most, the most CO2 emissions that is the worst for the environment or the most per kilometer that's the worst for the environment. Finally, the analyst would put the query in, um, which would be written in Python or Pandas or SQL. This is written in Python, specifically the Pandas library. And that query would return your response, which should be the Bugatti Chiron. Now, you may notice that the query itself is not actually different from the beginner level query, but the thought process behind it is more complex and requires a higher level reasoning. So let's see how our analytics bot responds to that type of query, the higher level query. So I've pasted my high level query into the submission box, hit enter, and then hit submit. So we get a response here and the response is the vehicle that is the worst for the environment is the Bugatti Chiron with 522 CO2 emissions in grams per kilometer. So as you can see, that is indeed the response that we were expecting. On the whole, I believe this analytics bot powered by Langchain and OpenAI has shown the ability to perform some higher level reasoning or higher level analysis on structured data sets. Something that I believe would be quite powerful for commercial teams to start implementing, to start automating some of those ad hoc requests that they get from their analytics stakeholders. Obviously, this is a prototype, and to implement this at scale within a commercial, in a commercial setting, there's a few things that you'd want to consider. So the first thing, obviously, is GDPR and data privacy. The second thing is scaling this. So to scale this for a commercial scale, you could imagine that you'd have maybe hundreds or even thousands in some case of users trying to query this at the same time. So 
this would need to be deployed on the correct infrastructure for scaling. The third thing to consider are the data sets themselves. I've carefully curated the data set behind this to ensure that the answers and the responses we get are sensible. So organizations looking to implement this type of thing within so organizations looking to implement an analytics bot for their own purposes would first need to look at their data management and data infrastructure to ensure that the data being fed into the bot is of high quality and is well curated. The final thing to consider here is on the rare occasion, the bot does hallucinate. So sometimes it does return responses that aren't correct and that's pretty hard to predict. Now, obviously with a human analyst, there are there is the chance that the analyst could create a, an incorrect query, for example. So they might write a SQL query to answer one of your, one of a stakeholder question and that could be incorrect. It's not clear right now what the rate of error is with a human analyst versus an analytics bot such as this. However, it should be embedded into the process that all responses from the analytics bot need to be sense checked. And I think a part of that is training decision makers that are using bots like this to make decisions in the art of, in the science of decision science to ensure that they understand what seems like a sensible response. They understand the domain well enough to gauge whether the responses are sensible or whether the bot is indeed hallucinating. Thank you for joining me on this demo today. And if you have any more queries, please don't, please feel free to contact us by visiting the website, datacentricsolutions.com, or have a read of the article, which will follow this demo.